You sighed, rolling your neck as you walked to your locker, your shoulder being knocked into by other students. You slept horribly that night after being stood up by Peter yet again, and MJ's words hadn't exactly soothed you. Stopping at your locker, you put in a combination and pulled it open, beginning to rifle through your books. You jumped at the feeling of a hand on your lower back and whipped your head around to see Peter. He froed his eyebrows at your reaction. Hey, Yasmin, you okay? You quickly relaxed and turned back around. Y yeah, I'm fine. You easily lied, a habit that you'd gotten pretty good at perfecting in front of him. Just didn't sleep well. Peter stood beside you as he started to open his own locker, humming an acknowledgement. You paused halfway as he pulled out a textbook and glanced at him from the side of your eye. So, uh, did, did you get my text last night? You asked, continuing to collect your things. Oh, right. Peter started and he turned to you. I did, and I'm really, really sorry. I was busy last night, but I promise I'll make it up to you. Liar, you thought bitterly. You gave him a closed lip smile. Right, it's fine. You paused again, took in a deep breath, swallowing nervously before asking, There's a Star Wars movie coming out and I was wondering if you wanted to go together? The words came out rushed and mumbled. He sighed. I would, but Ned and I already got tickets. Yeah, no, it's fine, you said quickly, shaking your head. You weren't even surprised at this point. I promise I'll make it up to you another way, though. Peter shut his locker. Well, I'll see you at lunch. Love you, he said, kissing your temple before walking towards his first class. His kisses were rare these days. Your heart clenched as you watched him walk away. Did he really not see how miserable you've been lately? Because it seemed that half the school was aware except for the one person you really wanted, needed to notice. You shut your locker with more force than you intended to and swung your backpack over your shoulder. Love you. His goodbye echoed in your head. Liar. You sighed and leaned forward, your forehead resting against the cool lockers. You couldn't help yourself as you thought back to the first time he said those words. You were hanging out with him and Ned one night when you had gotten in a huge argument in Peter's living room with Ned over why the fight scene in Harry Potter with Harry and Voldemort was so much better in the book than it was in the movie. It was silly, really, but what you wouldn't give to go back to that moment. Ned, you're not listening. The two fight scenes aren't even comparable to one another. Besides, you haven't even read the books. You yelled, standing up, gesturing wildly with your hands. Ned looked back at you, wide-eyed and scared. Yasmin, all I'm saying is that they did a pretty good job in the movie. Like, I love the part when he turned to dust. You groaned loudly. No, it was awful. Wait, I'm gonna read it to you. You said, grabbing your backpack that was on the ground. You have it with you? Ned yelled in surprise. Of course I do, you said, rolling your eyes. How the heck do you specifically have Deathly Hollows on you? You shrugged. I come prepared, you said, pulling out your book and beginning to rifle through the pages. Ah, ha! Here, you sat down and began reading the fight scene between the two. Meanwhile, Peter had just watched the argument in total amusement, but once you had pulled out the book, the amusement turned into an overwhelming and indescribable feeling, and Peter found himself thinking, Oh my god, my girlfriend is such a nerd. I'm gonna fucking marry her. And Peter watched as you read the fight scene, not registering a single word and instead just staring at you at how passionate you were over something that anyone else would consider silly and it felt like you were meant for him and that he was made to love you. The second you finished the last line, Peter suddenly blurted out, I love you. You and Ned whipped your head towards Peter in surprise. You furrowed your eyebrows. What? Ned looked back and forth between you two awkwardly. Um, I'm gonna give you two some privacy, he said before scurrying off towards Peter's bedroom. You what? You asked again, and Peter suddenly found himself nervous, not actually thinking if you returned the feelings or not, but nevertheless, he repeated himself. I... I love you? You covered the bottom of your face with the Harry Potter book, feeling the smile split in your face. And a second later, you tossed the book aside and ran over to Peter, knocking him down on the couch. You attacked his face in butterfly kisses, not being able to keep the giggles from coming out, and Peter started laughing with you, his arms wrapped tightly around your waist. You pulled back and gazed into his eyes. I hope that means you love me back. Peter chuckled nervously. Of course I do, you said, and you crashed your lips against his in a hard kiss. You pulled back again. I love you, Peter Parker. Peter was grinning ear to ear, pulling you back down for another kiss. Neither of you knew how long you'd been kissing until you heard Ned yell from Peter's bedroom, Can I come back? And uh, you were right, Yasmin. Book's better. At that, you pulled away from Peter and sat up, yelling back, Told you so. Love you. The same words now made your ears ring. Fucking liar. 
Hey, you jumped again and spun around on your heel. Jesus Christ, you hissed, facing MJ. You guys need to stop sneaking up on me like that. MJ shrugged. You look like shit. You rolled your eyes and the two of you began walking to your shared class. Thanks, you grumbled. Feel like shit. You gonna do it? Do what? Break up with Peter. Your shoulders sagged. God, MJ, I really don't want to talk about that right now. All right, all right, MJ said, putting her hands up in surrender. I'll change the subject. Did you hear we're starting a project in history? You groaned. No. Didn't we just hand in a project? Yeah, MJ said. The two of you came to a stop outside your history class, waiting with your classmates until you were allowed inside, and I heard she's picking our partners this time. You're kidding. You groaned again. Nope. She said, popping the pee, your class beginning to shuffle inside. You took your respectful seat next to MJ, throwing your bag onto the ground. Good morning, your teacher greeted, the class answering back in their tired, Hello. You had zoned out for the rest of class, too tired to think about history, and instead wallowing in your own self-pity, thinking about your boyfriend, if he could still technically be considered that. Your attention was only brought back to the lesson when your teacher announced, We're starting a new project. The class groaned. And I'm choosing your partners. The class groaned louder. You glanced at MJ who muttered out in, told you so, making you roll your eyes. She started to list off the partners, and as the list wore on and neither your or MJ's names were called, you became hopeful that maybe you'd be partnered with her. MJ and Sydney? It would seem that you jinxed yourself. And finally, Brad and Yasmin. Brad? You forward your eyebrows and glanced two seats behind you where Brad Davis sat. He smiled when he saw you and waved, and you waved once before turning around again. Brad? Really? You asked. MJ shrugged. Didn't he used to have that stupid crush on you before the blip? Yeah. He used to follow me around like a puppy, you muttered. Does he still like you? Don't know. Suppose not. He can pretty much have any girl he wants now. You fell silent as your teacher began explaining the project, losing track of time until the bell rang. Your next three periods were slow and you felt yourself almost falling asleep in each one, so by the time lunch rolled around, you were ready to call it a day as you placed your bag on the table to use as a pillow. You sat next to Peter and across from MJ and Ned. Hey Yasmin, you alright? Ned asked. She's fine, Peter answered for you. Just tired. Yeah, you mumbled. I'm gonna sleep. Everyone nodded and left you alone. You tried to sleep, the chatter in the cafeteria acting as white noise as it started lulling you to sleep. At least it was until you felt a tap on your shoulder. You sat up, squinting your eyes, the light too bright as they fell around the person who tapped your shoulder like a halo. You blinked a few times, the person finally coming into focus. Brad Davis. He stood above you with a wide smile, your friends and you looking at him expectantly. Hey Yasmin, sorry to wake you. What? Oh, no, it's fine. What's up? You asked, eyes finally adjusting completely to the light. I was wondering when you wanted to get together for a history project. Well, I'm free tonight, if that works for you. Yeah, tonight's perfect. Your place or mine? You found his smile contagious, and for the first time that day, you found yourself with a genuine smile upon your own lips. It was small, but nevertheless, it was there. We can go to mine. If you want, we can meet up after school and walk to my place. Sure, sounds good. I'll see you later then. Yeah, see you later, he said as he started walking away. You looked back down at your friends, Ned and Peter looking confused and MJ having a calculating look on her face. Your smile fell. What? Since when do you talk to Brad? Ned asked, thoroughly confused. You rolled your eyes. I don't. We just have a project together. Or did you just miss that entire conversation? Oh, Ned shrugged. I'm sorry, you just look happy to see him. You laughed at that. Okay, I'm gonna go get lunch now. MJ, come up with me. You said as you stood up, MJ following after you, leaving the boys by themselves. I'm sorry, man. Ned apologized to Peter. Peter furrowed his eyebrows. For what? That you're gonna lose your girlfriend to Brad Davis? He said nonchalantly. What? Uh, of course I'm not gonna lose Yasmin to Brad. Why would you say that? Because that's the first time we've seen her smile in like forever. Plus, it's Brad Davis. All the girls want him. Peter rolled his eyes. Not all the girls. And definitely not Yasmin. She's perfectly happy with our relationship. Ned's mouth dropped open, forked halfway in his mouth. You're kidding, right? He asked, the mashed potatoes falling off the utensil. What? Peter, you barely hang out with her anymore. That's not true, Peter said, getting defensive. Yes, it is. You were supposed to hang out with her last night and she told me you never showed up. What? Oh, that's what I forgot. Well, that's just one time, Peter grumbled. No, you did the same thing last week. She was waiting at Delmar's for nearly three hours for you. 
And what about three weeks ago when you two made plans to see some movie that she had to watch by herself? And what about- Oh right, Peter groaned. I get it. But I don't know. I guess I just feel that since the blip she had gotten a little clingy. And I honestly just needed some space. So yeah, maybe I should try a little harder now, but I've been really busy right now. Besides, I know Yasmin, and I think I know if she was that unhappy with our relationship. And she literally said like 10 words to Brad, she's not gonna leave me. Ned sighed, shaking his head. Whatever you say. 